and gas uh, resources in the world are owned and developed by public corporations, not by private monopolies. So Canada is in a minority. Even Mexico, which we are part of in NAFTA, Canada, US, Mexico, how many people in this room know, be honest now, please, be honest. How many of you know that in Mexico there is only one oil company and it's publicly owned by the government? How many of you knew that before I said it? Anybody? It's true. It's not your fault that you don't know that. It's been hidden from the Canadian people. They don't want Canadians to know that this is a real option to have public ownership of oil and gas. So, so point number one is that's the way to fight climate change. We have to gain control of those resources and then start using that to develop massive uh, uh, programs of investment in, and R&D into new technologies and renewable energy. But there's another reason as well. That is wealth. Same with the mining sector, same with the rest of our natural resources. This is the wealth of Canada. And yet it's being, the, the bulk of it, the benefit of those, of those resources are going to the big monopolies and the banks. If those resources were owned and developed by the Canadian people, if we doubled the tax rate for corporations, if we cut the military budget, we would have all sorts of resources to do a whole number of things. And this is what we call for in our platform. Where is it? Everybody see the platform? Sorry, didn't mean to hit the mic. <laughs> This is the short version. If you go to our website, you can see the whole version of our pl the platform. And by the way, there's now Punjabi on the website too, uh, describing our platform. But what do we call for? Well, we call for universal, free, publicly administrated and run uh, Medicare. And what does that mean? It means not only free hospital care, but getting rid of these private for-profit clinics and the privatization of lab tests and so on. It means getting rid of premiums, which in many provinces people have to pay. In Ontario we don't, but in BC for instance there is a premium that people have to pay every month in order to get their health card. It means, it means uh, relisting all of those medical procedures that have been delisted. Like when you go for eye exams, you know, right? Those of you who wear glasses. It used to be free in Ontario, and it got delisted about 10 or 12 years ago. Can't remember, maybe Liz, you can remember the exact date. But it was delisted, and now you have to pay for it yourself. Not just the glasses itself, but the actual test when you go to the optometrist. And why did they de delist it? Is this some sort of cosmetic thing? Is it like the same thing as getting a nose job or a tummy tuck? No. The right to eyesight means the ability to read, to be aware, to drive a car. It is a, an essential medical procedure. And yet it was delisted. And they're doing that all over the place. They're cutting and cutting and cutting. So to make sure that healthcare is truly universal and then to add to that, not only eye care, but dental care, which should be paid for as well. Pharma care for all the drugs that people need. Long-term care for seniors. All of these things should be public run, and we have the resources to do it. We have the resources for a universal, affordable, and publicly administrated child care system in this country. We have the resources to finance public post-secondary education in this country so that every student from every family, from every class in our society can get a full education from cradle to grave free and to abolish tuition fees and in fact to provide stipends to students so that they can get an education. 
and to provide grants instead of loans and all because right now the cost of education has skyrocketed and I'm sure every many people in this room know from first-hand experience they might have kids that are trying to get a post-secondary education how bloody expensive it's become and how much these students have to go into debt and their families too in order to pay for that education is that a wild demand well, there are countries, many countries in the world, that have free post-secondary <coughs> education. Many countries. Recently, a state, uh, the state of Bavaria, in Germany, just eliminated post-secondary tuition. They got rid of it. Poor countries, like third world countries, like Ecuador, has eliminated post-secondary tuition. It's doable. But there has to be the political will, and there has to be a government and a movement outside of parliament that is prepared to fight for policies that put people's needs before corporate greed. That's a real alternative that our party is trying to present in this election campaign. And even though our party is small, and even though we don't have hardly any money, by the way, we're going to ask you to help solve that problem later on, And even though we are blocked and silenced by the mass media, by CBC and CTV and Global and, and the Toronto Star and the Globe and Mail, when was the last time you read an article about what the communists have to say? Never. They've given us zero coverage. Despite all of these obstacles, we're finding that when we can talk to people, when we knock on their doors, when we speak at all candidates' meetings, and we give them our platform, we're finding people more and more like what we're saying. And it's not by accident. It's because more and more people realize that this system of capitalism is the problem. That it's not just this government or that policy, this bill or that, uh, um, you know, that action, but it, it's a reflection of a deep crisis within capitalism itself. And it's a global crisis. And it calls for global solutions, a clo global alternatives. And that that's what our party speaks to. So even though we say, yes, let's by all means defeat Stephen Harper and the Tories, that's not enough. We need to move in a new direction in our country, a fundamentally new direction, a direction which our party says is socialism. And so, yes, we raise also the S word that, again, nobody else talks about. Everybody is prepared to stay within capitalism, as if capitalism is going to live forever and ever and ever. For the next millennium and the millennium after that, we'll all be stuck in capitalism with the 1% over here and the 99% poorer and poorer. No, we say there is an alternative, a fundamental alternative, and that alternative is socialism. And that's what our party is dedicated to do. And with your help, we can achieve that. And our last objective in this part, in this campaign, is that we know whatever the outcome on October 19th, we hope the Tories are out. But whether it's a liberal government or an NDP government or maybe a coalition of minority government, whatever the outcome is, we know that the fight for fundamental change in defense of workers' rights, in defense of our environment, in support of Aboriginal <coughs> peoples in this country and, and to win their true national rights, to, to make a democratic, a truly demo democratic immigration policy in this country, to fight for peace and disarmament, to defend our environment, whatever it is, we know that that fight is going to continue after October 19th. And it's going to continue not in Parliament, but outside of Parliament, in our communities, in our workplaces, on the streets. It's going to continue. And our party is going to be there to be part of that struggle, to help to build that struggle, because there's a lot more at stake here than just one election. It's the future of our country. And if you agree with what we stand for, if it resonates with you that yes, 
we're the party that really is partisan, and we're partisan on the side of a working class, then I invite you to be part of our party, to join our party and help build for a bright future for a socialist Canada. Thank you.